I've been here since April. I've been here since six April. months. I know you ain't been here long. <laughs> What'd that mean? Where you going? What's the gospel? Not your gospel. What's the gospel? You don't know the gospel. What's the gospel according to the Bible? The power of God to what, salvation what to the Jew first, then the Greek. What did Christ say the gospel was? To the Jew first, then the Greek. What did Jew first, then the Greek. Christ say that? And you a contradiction anyway, man. Oh, did Christ say that? You shouldn't, you, you, according to your own doctrine, you ain't even saved, bro. You gonna go into slavery too. How is that possible according to my own doctrine? You gonna go into slavery too. What's my doctrine? Your doctrine is that the white man is the Edomite. That's right. That's the right. black man is the tribe of Judah. Uh-huh. And what does that yes. make you? A Levite. Oh, that's right. A Levite. A Levite. That's, right. that's what that makes Prove me. It to me. No, no. That's, that's very Prove simple it. to prove to you. But first, let's go to what Christ said the gospel was. Luke 4 and 17. Luke chapter uh, 4, 4 and 17. 17. Why are you running from the word of Christ? Uh, running you running from the word of Christ? I You're a coward. No. No. You're a coward. You're a coward. You're a coward. You're a coward. Let's read Christ. Let's read the gospel. All right. I'm going to read it first. How about this? 17. Let's go. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. What did Christ anoint it for, Read To preach the gospel to the poor. So the gospel. So this is what Christ is saying the gospel is. He's quoting Isaiah. Now let's go to what he's quoting in Isaiah. Let's see what the gospel is according to the word of Christ. Read. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 61. <laughs> Verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings. That's the gospel. Read. Unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, in the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And where? In Zion. To the Jew and to the Greek. In Zion. To everybody. To Zion. To who? In Zion. So according to Christ, the gospel is pursuant to Zion. To Zion. Okay, how am I twisting this? How am I twisting this? Hold on, let me get my speaker. Okay, that's fine. Articulate to me. So as soon as you get that ready, articulate to me how I'm twisting this, please. Absolutely. Not a problem. I just love how you pick and choose scripture to back up your little doctrine there. Okay, so I need you to articulate. Okay, the Bible says. Articulate. Paul said. No, no, no. I am not ashamed. I, I, need, I, need, I need exegesis. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I need exegesis of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so explain For this. For it is the power of God unto salvation. Unto salvation. Explain this. 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 Explain this.
devout men out of every nation. So we're talking about, yes, get on it. You're right. Why? Because there's Jews, devout men out of every and nation in heaven. Okay, so wait. So, hold on. No, sir, sir. What's your name? I'm not going to tell you my name. Okay, all right. All right, Devin. Uh, all right, Devin. So listen, so listen, Devin. Right? Have you asked Jesus? No, we're not brothers. We're not brothers. I didn't call you brother. I said devil. Right. I'm not, I'm not I'm a, not a devil, devil either. Devil. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Somebody. And 
that the sins of their foreparents, they're paying for, right? We suffer every day. You're born into suffering, right? Why don't they get to be born into suffering? What's going to happen to them for that? Well, God got an answer to that point by like period, right? Read. It says, his eyes shall see his destruction. What? His eyes shall see his destruction. Meaning he's going to see the destruction of his people, That's right. right? For all the things that they did to so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. They're going to have to see, they're going to have to realize the sins of their foreparents, and they're going to have to pay for the sins of their foreparents. Right. They're going to have to pay for feeding black babies to alligators. They're going to have to pay for raping black women and raping black men, cutting black babies out of wounds, putting us in slavery. They're going to have to pay for that. There's no other explanation. How else are we going to just, the most high God just going to let that go? We're just going to let that go. It's all right. We're just going to get over it. Man, we ain't just going to get over it, man. Who's going to pay point blank period and like he admitted he couldn't be civilized people come up here every day and we have back and forth conversations dialogues intellectually he admitted he couldn't be civilized because there's not a civilized bone in that cave monster's body right. That's right. not one read it says his eyes shall see his destruction uh -huh. and he shall drink of the wrath of the almighty see, god is going to judge these people man all right, God got to judge these people for what they did to so-called blacks and Latinos and Native Indians. Man. Are you kidding me? All this rape, robbery, and murder built an empire on stolen land. Somebody got to pay for that, man. Right? We on. Chapter verse 29. It says, Have you not asked them that go by the way, and do you not know their tokens, that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? What are they reserved for? The day of destruction. That's what the wicked is reserved for. So the wicked, they get to go around and they think it's all good. They think they're just going to get away with all the evil that they've done. But they're reserved to the day of destruction. That's all. You're just getting stalled out. You, the revenge is coming upon you, man. All right? Anybody who's tactful, you don't necessarily uh, uh, avenge somebody instantly. Sometimes you wait. Sometimes you let them start feeling themselves. Let them think in their mind that they've gotten away with the crime that they committed against you. And you catch them when you least expect it. Is it not written that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night? They think they've gotten away with all of this rape, robbery, murder, and oppression and, and slavery that they've done to us for half a millennia. They truly believe in their heart of hearts that they've gotten away with it. And that's why God is going to catch them when they least expect it. Because the day of the Lord cometh as a thief in the night. Read. It says, they shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. That's what they're going to be brought forth to the day of wrath without even seeing it coming. And that's going to be executed in part through the thermonuclear war that's getting ready to break out between Russia and between America. Read. It says, who shall declare his way to his face? Uh -huh. And who shall pay him what he hath done? Uh -huh. Yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb. See that? Who shall repay these people for what they've done? Who's going to who's gonna pay for Gator Bay? That's what I want to know. Who's going to pay for slavery? That's what I want to know. Who's going to pay for stealing the United States of America? Who's going to pay for stealing Texas from Mexico? Who's going to pay for that? I'm going to tell you who's going to pay for that. Who's going to pay for it? And 
God is going to make him to pay for it, man, according to the Bible. God is going to make the so-called white man pay for everything that he's done to blacks and Latinos and Native Americans. Everything. Read. Jeremiah. There's nothing that you can do about that. Right? Again, so, th so this devil, right, he just sat up here with his damn horn yelling at us. How many verses in the Bible did he read? Did he get a verse? He didn't get one verse. But, but I'm twisting the scriptures, right? I'm reading the Bible, he's not, but I'm twisting the Bible. How, how crazy is that, right? The nigga that's reading the Bible somehow is twisting, but the nigga who's not reading the Bible can't show you how he's, all he's gonna say is, you're twisting. See, because Paul said, I'm, I'm dealing with Christ. That dude believes Christ is the most high God. You know that? He believes Jesus Christ is the most high God. I believe in who you call Christ. I don't believe he's the most high God though, right? Right, so he believes Christ is the most high God, but he, he wants to disregard his words. And instead go after a, a, a misunderstanding of wrestling with Paul's words. Right? right? So it's like he did read one. He did read Matthew 24, oh, going to all nations. And then we show, he's right, and we show what that means. Because there are Israelites scattered in all nations. We show you what the gospel is. The gospel is for those. Read the gospel. Give me Isaiah 61 again. It's 61, right? Right? Because we got to understand exactly what the gospel is and who the gospel pertains to. The gospel pertains to the Bahamian that just got in the Haitian down there in the Bahamas. They got ravaged with the earthquake. That's who the gospel pertains to, right? Who, the, who, who Trump said are very, very dangerous gang members and he doesn't want to let them into the country for refuge. Who? I just want to start from the top? Yeah. Okay, Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me uh -huh. because the Lord hath anointed me. That's what Yahweh Shah said. He read that. He said, The Most High hath anointed me to do what? To preach good tidings uh -huh. unto the meek. Unto uh, the who? To the meek. Ain't nothing meek about that devil. Really? Really? He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, uh -huh. to proclaim liberty to the captives. Yeah, but saying liberty to who? To the captives. To the captives. Wait a minute. Who's in captivity? Who's in captivity right now? We're in captivity as a people. So if he's proclaiming liberty to the captives, the captives who need liberty are blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're the ones in captivity. We're the main people in these jails. Read. And the opening of the prison. Of the what? Of the prison. The damn jail. Read. To them that are bound. Who are the main people in the prison? Blacks and Latinos. Coincidentally, read. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord uh -huh. and the day of vengeance of our God. Who needs vengeance on the people who have been oppressing them for 500 years? Who have not been able to get it on their own? Oh, us. We To comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. And what? In Zion. See, he couldn't deal with it because this is what who you call Jesus Christ said the gospel was. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. It didn't say the whole earth. It said in Zion. Christ qualified this as the gospel and it pertains to Zion, we to give unto them beauty for ashes. Them beauty for ashes. What's going on, brother? Okay, go ahead. This is the oil of joy for mourning. Okay. Oil of joy for mourning. We the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh -huh. For the spirit of heaviness. Is everyone in the world who always had more of a spirit of heaviness than the people we're looking at on this side? Who is going through more heaviness than her? Well, let's say the Panama deception. Who knows about the Panama deception? You know, talking about the Panama. Anybody ever seen a documentary called The Panama Deception? Where the damn American white man was testing damn ray guns on the Panamanian people? I know a brother from Panama. He said he, they came back to school and there was a lot of friends that weren't there no more. You know why his friends weren't in class anymore? They're dead. Who killed them? Oh, the white man. That's who killed them. See what I'm saying? Who, who is more and more than us? Nobody's more and more than us. So who does the gospel pertain to? That's the question, because Christ said he's coming to those who mourn. These devils, you think they mourning? You kidding me? In the answer one, they never cried a day in their damn life, because they never had a reason. That's right. Well, in one hour, God is going to get them. He said in one hour, That's right, they will become a widow. Read. It says um, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, uh -huh. the planting of Yahweh, that he might be glorified. Uh -huh. And they shall build the old race. They shall raise up the former desolations, uh -huh. and they shall repair the waste cities. Uh -huh. The desolations of many generations. That's right. And, and Israel still ain't prepared, so what does that let you know? Them people that's there now is not the people. Because the temple has not even been rebuilt. Right? The temple lies desolate right now in Tel Aviv. Right. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And what? And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. What that mean? What does that mean if a stranger is feeding your flock? When we were in slavery, we were the stranger to the white man that fed his flock. Right or wrong? 
We wouldn't sell these animals. We picked this damn cotton. We cut this sugar cane. We picked this coffee. Right? We did all that. We were the strangers that fed their flocks. Well, the Bible says strangers are going to feed our flocks. So what does that mean? Slavery. Right? What is that devil that just came? Where is he going into? He's going into slavery. That's right. Where are his two little tear daughters going to? Right? Give me, uh, give me, uh, Matthew, give me the tears, man. All right? Because that's why, this is why we have this here on our board. Right? We have the diversity that ranges amongst our people. Because you see them two little girls, and if you didn't know them, brother, you would think they was two sisters. Right? But who is their father? The devil. Right? So you have a sister like uh, Rashida Jones. You, some of some people might think this is a white girl, but who was her father? Quincy Jones. Everyone knows Quincy Jones is a brother, right? So her father is Quincy Jones. You might think it's a white girl, but might, you might think those are sisters. That's why you can't just base everything off appearance and skin color. Because guess what? Those are two little devils, and that's an Israelite. So read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verse 24. Uh -huh. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man uh -huh. which sowed good seed in his field. Uh -huh. But while he, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. So what happens is while the enemy is there, while, while, while you're asleep, the enemy comes and sows tares among the wheat. What is a tear? Who, who knows what a tear is, right? If you're familiar with agriculture. It looks just like wheat that spring up, right? But it's not. When you look at it, it's, oh, this ain't wheat. This is a weed, right? But it looks exactly like wheat, right? This is what happened when the white man would have come and get with sisters, break our sisters, do all those various things and have children with them. Then what happens? They look like one of you, but they're really not. You understand what I'm saying? That's all they are, the tears in the wheat. Christ warned us about, he's over here talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ warned me about you. You're the enemy that sowed tears amongst the wheat. So I already know about you. I've been warned about who you call Christ. Read. It says, but while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat uh -huh. and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, it brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Uh -huh. So there it is. So here are the fruit, but there's the tares also. There they are right there, trying to blend in, trying to pass themselves off. Read. So the servant of the householder came, un came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? Uh -huh. From whence then hath the tares? Uh -huh. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. A what? An enemy hath done this. An enemy have done this. Who is the enemy? That dude. That's the enemy that just came in. That's EJ. That's EJ Love. No, that's no, his. He, that's his partner, though. Yeah. Oh, that's EJ's man. Okay, okay, okay. E, EJ. E, EJ's in the hospital right now. He's got a. He's got a terrible kidney disease, and we praise the Lord for. Call hello, you how about Shimmy Al Shai? You see what the most? <laughs> uh, yeah, if he gave EJ a kidney, what do you think he gonna do to him? EJ got a little bit more sense than that devil. He can hang a little bit more because when he remember EJ came out, talked to him that one day. That was, yeah, yeah, that, was that, that was EJ. That was EJ. I talked. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, this dude is super uncivilized. Yeah. Uh, we, we're supposed to be able to have a back and forth. You see what I'm saying? But he can't even do that because if scriptures start coming out, the reason he got to do it because he doesn't know how to deal with it. You see right, what I'm saying? Right. He's not as astute. So he just got to, you know, I got to just go into straight caveman, cave beast mode. Yeah. Why? Because if I don't, I'm going to get cut. You see what I'm saying? It's just a tactic to divert from getting cut. That's all that is. Go ahead. Diversionary <laughs> tactics are red herring, brother. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 28. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. Uh -huh. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Uh -huh. But he said, Nay. So, see, but the thing is, we can't gather up because there's some tears that we don't know. You can't tell. You see what I'm saying? Or you ain't. You don't have enough information as to their lineage. So, are we supposed to go try to find the tears out? No. Read. Con. It says, nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. You don't want to catch no wheat, too. You don't want to tell somebody they're not an Israelite who is one. So don't even try to do that. You just preach and let the sheep hear the voice through the spirit of the Most High. Wheat. Let both grow together until the harvest. Until when? The harvest. Until the harvest comes. What is the harvest going to come? That's called salvation. That's when the harvest is. Salvation. When the reapers come. Who are the reapers? The angels. Right? We don't. Um. I'm gonna just get to. I'm gonna just skip to where Christ breaks it down. Verse uh, 37. He answered them. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Uh -huh. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The Israelites. Who? Really? But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh, of who? The children of the wicked one. So what? What are the kids? The children of the wicked one. Because they're of their father. Who is their father? The devil. And like you said, oh, it's not flesh. Okay, you're right. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 4. You're right. It's not, flesh and blood is not the devil. It's the spirit that's in y'all that is revealed that y'all are the devil. That's why, to, just to prove that, that's why I can say that your children are also the devil. Because they don't have your skin. They're not pale and caucasoid. You see what I'm saying? 
They look like our people. But guess what? They're still the devil because you have passed that spirit on to them. From the scientific perspective, you inherit your behavioral traits from your father. This is a scientific fact. Your behavioral trait, the way you behave innately is inherited from your father. That's how you can have brothers who never even met their daddy before and their mom can say what? Nigga, you just like your father. Why? Because there's nothing you can do about it because it's programmed in you, in your spirit, that you're going to behave like how your father behaved. You understand what I'm saying? It don't matter how you look, none of that. Your behavioral traits you're going to get from your pops, man. That's unavoidable. Anything you get from anyone else is what you call acquired. Meaning over the course of time, you learn things. You said nature versus nurture. You learn, like you can start acting like your mom from doing what? From being around her all day, right? You pick up mannerisms from her. But as far as your inherent mannerisms, like I took a picture the other day, right? And there's a picture of my pops, and this nigga's doing the exact same pose, right? And I go, damn, I'm doing the exact same pose. Why is it we keep doing this pose? But it's because you inherit that trait. I'm not trying to mock that. I'm just, this is just the, the natural pose I go into when a nigga take a picture of me. Well, this, my father, he do the same thing. That's how you know it's, it's you just inherit this thing. You can't even help it. You see what I'm saying? Read. Come. It says, the enemy that sold them is the devil. Uh -huh. The harvest is the... Oh, I can get that Habakkuk 2 and 4. I'm, I'm on that for... Just to show that it's, it's, it's of their spirit, too. It's not the flesh. It's the spirit that's in them. Read. Habakkuk 2 and 4. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. That's it. The soul that's in him is not upright. The soul is corrupt. What is the soul? It's where your morals are. It's, it's, it's basically your consciousness, right? Your consciousness is your soul, right? So if you have a, 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 a wicked conscience, what are you going to do? bad things, right? Because you don't have a conscience, a good conscience that's telling you, no, don't do that. That's the wrong thing to do. You have an evil, a crooked conscience, right? Now give me, um, Salaki, give me, give me, be, give me Cain real quick, right? Because Cain had a mark set upon him. And that mark that was set upon Cain was the, the basically the taking of his melanin. And that was as a result of what was in his evil spirit. That's why he got his melanin taken to show that this was an evil man. Right? So the, the actually, it's not your flesh, it's your spirit that makes you wicked, but your flesh is a manifestation of the wickedness within you. This is why we can say the white man is the devil, and we understand this going all the way back to Cain, man. Read. Genesis 4 and 15. And the Lord Yahweh said unto, said unto him, Therefore, whosoever shall, uh, it's like it. whosoever slayeth Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. Uh -huh. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain. Lest any finding him should kill him. So wait, so why was a mark why was a mark set upon Cain? Right? What is the ultimate reason for his sin? Because he murdered his own brother. So the most high would he put a mark upon Cain. So you would be able to uh, this is that murderer right there. That's that dude. Hmm. He's the dude who had a something set upon him that differentiated him from everyone else on the planet Earth at that time. Right? Where was everyone else on that planet Earth? They had something. What was that something everyone had? It's called melanin. Everyone's people of color. They took Cain's color, right? Now, if they take Cain's color, he's not a person of color. He's a damn albinoid out there. He's pale. That set him apart from everyone else in the earth during that time period, right? This is how we know, but it was a manifestation of the wickedness that was within him. So you're right. He was right. It's not flesh and blood, but your outward appearance, your flesh and blood, is just a manifestation of that evil that's within your people. Proverbs 11 and 1. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 1. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. That's right. A false balance is an abomination to the Most High. So the Most High deal with balance. So that wickedness in your spirit, he manifests that outwardly to give us a, a heads up about your people. Right? Read on. Psalm 58 and 3. And that's why Esau tried to get away. He tried to deal with the hermetic woman to try to escape that. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't escape it because you have something called generational albinism. If people want to say, what is generation? I'll I show you pictures right now of two or three generations of a family, and they all albino, all of them. Grandparents, the, the parents, and the kids. All of them albino. That's called generational albinism, man. All right, when you deal with that, this is what was put on Esau. So that curse would, would lay in, and he would create a race of people that would be differentiated from everyone else. But since then, they've gone around trying to alter that. Why, how? By dealing with different women of color, like this devil just did. Right? Read. Yeah, here's an example of generation of Albinism. Second Kings 5 and 27. The leprosy thereof of Naaman, Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. For how long? Forever. For Naaman. So there's a group of people. It biblically it says that these people are going to have Albinism 
all the way through and through. See what I'm saying? So it's not, people act like we've been talking about it, some crazy far-fetched ideology, but everything is found right here in the Bible and in science. We're not just making stuff up. This is all biblically sound instruction and understanding. Right? We don't. This is back to, uh, it's about his spirit now. He looks, but this is Psalm 58 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Uh -huh. They go astray as soon as they be born, uh -huh. speaking lies. I just saw a video of a bunch of little white kids in elementary school beating the hell out of some little black girl. Who's seen that video? But saying they was beating the hell out of this little black girl in the damn school. You understand what I'm saying? What is that? Read that again. Psalm 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. Uh -huh. They, uh, okay. You're all right. Psalm 58 and 3. The uh -huh. wicked are estranged from the womb. Uh -huh. They go astray as soon as they be born, uh -huh. speaking lies. Speaking what? Speaking lies. These are the estranged from the womb. From the time that they're born, they're going out to be the damn devil. And that's why you can have a bunch of little white boys in the locker room jumping, beating the hell out of some little black girl. And somebody just standing and damn recording it. Nobody stopping it. Where are the teachers? Where are the parents? Where are all these little white kids get the idea? Here's a little, here's a little black girl. Let's just beat the hell out of her. You see what I'm saying? Where did that damn out? Who sparked that light bulb? Oh, I'll tell you, they're the damn devil. They could be this big, they could be this damn big. Let me tell you something. You know how many racial epithets get spewed by little white kids, man? That's they the main spew of racial epithets, man. Right? Like the sister, I talked to a sister on the phone the other day, and I asked the sister, because she had a problem, oh, you mixed. I said, all right, that's fine. I said, sister, how many times have you been called a nigger in your life? She said, zero times. I said, I can't tell you how many times I've been called a nigger in my life. And you know where the main place you get called a nigger at? If you go to school with white kids, that's the main place you're going to get called a nigger. A million, you're going to be a hundred million niggas. If you're Latino, you're going to be a beaner, you're going to be a speak, you're going to be told to learn to speak English and go to hell back to your country. That's what's going to happen. There's no disputing this, right? Just meaning what? They're the devil. When they're this big, they're already the devil. You see what I'm saying? They're already, it's already being bred up in them. So then when they get grown, they've had all them years of doing all that evil and all that wickedness. You see what I'm saying? And then they get some sense, oh, I'm going to try to clean it up a little bit. But then it comes out. Like you had the judge in New York. You heard about the judge in New York? He made a, he made a post, Make America Great Again, with a picture of a damn noose. Uh -huh. A damn judge. Oh, yeah, they had to get him up out of it. So they try to hide it, but it's still, they, be, it, they still have that feeling. That's why we don't take them so, oh, I love everyone, and I have black friends, I have Mexican friends, I have this and that. Get the hell out of here, man. Right. You're not fooling us, because we know. Read. Sirach 11 and 28. Judge none blessed before his death, uh -huh. for a man shall be known in his children. In his what? In his children. So where did they, here's the question, right? Where did the little white kid, where did they learn to call people niggas in space? Yeah. Where did they learn this terminology? <laughs> Who taught them this? They had to learn it from their parents, man. Didn't nobody else just make this up? You see what I'm saying? They didn't just come up with this on their own. They didn't just, just pick racial epithets out. If, if they would do that, they would just make their own up. They wouldn't use the ones that everyone else already used as well as that. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So what, is, so what does that let you know, man? That they are the damn devil and they are taught this by their parents. Right. right? So a man shall be known to his children. So if his children is racist, his damn parents is racist. That's who taught him that hate. Right. But then they re it. All we are doing is trying to call our people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans together, call us back to the laws of God, man. All right? That's what we're trying to do. But they call what we do hate, man. Right? We're just trying to get tell gang members to stop killing each other, man. But, 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 but what we're doing is hate, right? No, but you're teaching your little kid to hate blacks and Hispanics, man, every damn day. Right? We, and, and you teach them to hate Native Americans. Even if you don't know no Native Americans, you teach them that this is their country when this is a Native American's country, right? That's hatred, right? Go ahead. Had a quick testimony. Like the brother said, we had a group of white kids just looking at me and point going, nigga, 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 nigga. I'm not even joking. It's like, I've been called anywhere so many times in my life. I, there's no way I could give an accurate number. Maybe like a couple hundred thousand. Maybe that's an accurate number. But, um. And listen, and not even just by, it's by all these other nations, man. Yeah. I had a damn Asian call me a damn nigga. Imagine it's a damn Asian. You can't even see out your damn eyes. <laughs> and I'm a nigga, man. Imagine that, man. You see what I'm saying? But that's them. That's the damn, that's all the nations because they all are teamed up in cahoots against who? Against the true children of God, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Point blank period, man. Right? They're the one opening up these stores in your neighborhood, selling you poison. They're the one profiting off of you. They get all your damn money, right? You work hard. Who gets your damn money at the end of the day? You gonna run. First thing they do, you don't run a check cashing place. Who own the damn check cashing place? Right? I don't give a damn... I don't even know how many Marias is at the damn, is working at the counter. Who own the damn place, right? Maria don't own the damn check cashing place. She just works there, okay? There's somebody in her back, nine times out of ten, he's a damn Arab, he's a white man, he's an Asian. And he who owned the check cashing place. You understand what I'm saying? So they get all the money off of her, right? Read. 
Daniel 12 and 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, uh -huh. but the wicked shall do wickedly. That's the wicked are going to do what? Wickedly. That's all they can do. They cannot do anything but doing wickedly. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 13. Man. Right? The Bible got all these people numbered, man, but it's high time for you black and Spanish and Native Americans to come back to the laws of God and our true identity. Right? And this happened. The most high, let me tell you something, Esau. Your damn kingdom is getting ready to come to me. And you know what happened? I'm going to tell you something that happened, right? Uh uh, Eli Isaac. I'm going to tell you what happened. You know what happened this week? F-13 approached East Coast about a peace treaty. F-13 approached, and mind you, they didn't start that war. F-13 approached East Coast about a, a peace treaty this week. You see what I'm saying? The Mexicans came to the black about a peace treaty. When they, when listen, mind you, when they didn't start it, they the one that got robbed. See what I'm saying? So the Most High, he's raising up a spirit and pouring out his spirit upon all, all his people right now, man. Right? That's why this kingdom is getting ready to come to a colossal halt soon enough. All we got to do is repent and come back to the law of statute commandments. That's all we got to do as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. All we got to do is love each other for real. Stop telling each other dope. Stop stealing from each other. Love each other for real. And guess what? This whole place is going to cease to exist. This great oppressive country is going to cease to exist. Read. Ecclesiastes 7.13. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? Uh, who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? The Most High God has made these people to be a crooked people, to be an evil people, to be the devil on the earth, man. So there's no stopping that. There's no fixing that. There's no correcting that. There's no correcting them. They're going to be the uncivilized dogs that they've always been and that they've been created to be. Read. This is Romans chapter 9, verse 22. Um, let me start verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Once to honor and once to dishonor. So he made those people unto what? Unto dishonor to save the most high God. It's nothing nobody can do about that. God has his divine preeminence and sovereignty to make and create and do whatever the hell he feel like. Read. What if God were to show his wrath and to make his power known, uh -huh. endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? That's all he's been doing to these people, man. Read. Time. I mean, that's the point. Vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. Right. right. And so called black people, it's time to put on white for real, man. We need to come back to the law, statute, commandments of God and stop sinning. That's what time it is for our people. Come back to these laws, man. All right. And separate from the devil. Read. Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord has made all things for himself. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. That's right. And he even made them, they had a purpose and they're serving their purpose. But their purpose is getting ready to be rendered obsolete. They're getting ready to be obsolete as a people. Once we repent, the white man will be obsolete. So his next job will only be to serve us and then to stop existing. That's going to be what's next for them. That's what the next few chapters of their life looks like. All we have to do is repent and come back to the laws of God and our true identity, man. Being the Hebrew Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. That's all we need to do. Read. Second Ezra 2 and 40. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Uh -huh. Those who are what? Clothed in white. Y'all clothed in white, but it's time to act like you're clothed in white. What does that mean? It's time to separate from your sins, man. All right? Separate from breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. That's what time it is. Read. Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. That's right. Fulfill the law of the Lord. That's how you really dressed in white, by fulfilling the law of the Lord. So we calling all of our people to what? Fulfill the law of the Lord, man. Be dressed in white for real now, man, because we are the true children of God. So it's time for us to act like it and keep the laws of God, keep the commandments of God, obey the voice of God, man. That's what it is time for, so-called black man, black woman. Read. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Uh -huh. Beseech the power of the Lord that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hollow. That's right. Be hollow, right? Be holy. That's the figurative meaning of being dressed in white. To be holy, it's time for us to be holy. And what does holy mean? It's time for us to be separate. How do we separate from all the evils of this world? We start keeping the law, statute, commandments of the Most High God. That's how you separate. That's how you truly holy and hollow. That's how you really is dressed in white. By keeping the law, statute, commandments of God. So now we here we are looking apart. Let's act apart now and keep the laws of God. Right? Precept. Go ahead. Romans chapter 7, verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy. Right. The law is holy, the commandment is holy, we are and just and good. Uh -huh. And just and good. So if the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good, shouldn't we be doing what is holy and just and good as a people? That's what we should be doing. That's how we really close in one through the spirit of the Most High. We have to follow the laws, the statutes, and commandments and come back to the fact that we are the true Israelites of the Bible. We the true Jews of the Bible, man. All right? That's the heritage that's been stolen from us and hidden from us throughout the whole planet Earth. That's what we need to come back to. Read. First Peter chapter 1, verses 
13 to 16. Uh -huh. Wherefore, bring up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahweh Shai. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lesson in your ignorance, uh -huh. but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's right. We've been called to be holy. God is holy. We need to be holy. It's, it's just that simple. So again, we don't need to, need to put the white on. We need to act like with, with a world dressed in white. We need to be holy. Just like you got women, they wear a damn white dress to the wedding, and they a damn whore. You see what I'm saying? That ain't right. That's fake. You see what I'm saying? You might want to put on a black dress, a dark brown dress. You see what I'm saying? Just to, just to embody filthiness. Right? Read. Really? It says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh -huh. That's right. Be ye holy, for I am holy. So it's time for us to start being holy. What makes us holy is the fact that we keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of God, man. The same things that we heard in church for all these years is just done away with and just doesn't matter. That's what we need to come back and keep because that is what's going to be a true change and make a true difference amongst our people and in our community. That's the only thing that's really going to work for us as a people is if we keep these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Shalom, what's going on? It's your brother, Chief Priest Allah Zawon Lawyer, a.k.a. the Gorilla Hebrew. And I'm just letting y'all know, I just dropped my official clothing line, Urban Gorilla. Go to UrbanGorilla.com right now to check us out, man, and pick something up. That's U-R-B-N-G-R-L-A.com. We got all kind of items for men, women, children, even infants, as well as fragrance oil, smell goods. You can also check out Hebrew Israelite Clothing Co., another Sakari business on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, you can hit up DeaconSakari.com to get your plug on the scars, the music, and the children's Bibles. Thanks for your time. All praise to the Most High. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom.